So if you work in an area with a much higher fee pool, your bonus is going to be much higher, right? And even, I mean, to a lesser degree at the junior level, that's still true as well, right? And so technology investment banking um, is probably one of the top three uh, fee pools in investment banking. Like in 2020, I think the highest one was financial institutions. Uh, and then the second one was industrials. And then technology investment banking was third. Hey guys, if you like the content on this episode today, I want you to go and click the subscribe button to make sure that you get all of our future episodes as well, because we're putting out two to three episodes every single week uh, to make sure that we help you get into the top investment banks in the world. Okay. Today, I want to talk about the four reasons why I think technology investment banking, or sometimes known as TMT investment banking, is the best coverage group that you can work for. Okay. Um, we get this question a lot. From students where they ask like hey what uh, now that I've gotten the offer uh, what group should I try to get into right um, a lot of banks they'll recruit uh, interns uh, out of a generalist pool so you don't actually especially if you're recruiting for uh, New York um, but you know if you're re if you're recruiting for the regional offices typically the office focuses on a specific coverage group uh, but if you're recruiting out of generalist pool even after you get the offer, they'll do what's called a placement date where they try to match you up with a group um, that is excited about you as a candidate and also that you're excited about them as well, right? And so we get this question about like, hey, well, what group should I go for? Um, as you can tell by the title of this video, uh, obviously I think that uh, the technology investment banking group uh, is one of the best groups you can go after for several reasons, okay? Now, obviously this is my personal opinion and there's no right or wrong here. And admittedly, I'm a little bit biased because I personally worked in invest, uh, technology investment banking. But um, here are the reasons why I think technology investment banking is the best place to be. So one, um, you have to look at the size of the fee pool, right? The revenue fee pool. So obviously, investment banks, the way they make money is they do deals. And for every deal they do, their clients pay them a certain amount of fees, right? You want to be in the groups that are generating the most fees, okay? Because... If you're generating the most fees, that means you're going to be more important to the bank. If you're more important to the bank, that means that you have more job security. That also means that if you do decide to stay at the bank and eventually you move up and you become, uh, say, a managing director, where as a senior banker, most of your pay is largely tied to the amount of fees that you can actually pull, pull in for the firm, right? And so if you work in an area with a much higher fee pool, your bonus is going to be much higher, right? And even, I mean, to a lesser degree at the junior level, that's still true as well. Right? And so technology investment banking um, is probably one of the top three uh, fee pools in investment banking. Like in 2020, I think the highest one was financial institutions. Uh, and then the second one was industrials. And then technology investment banking was third. Okay. Now, obviously, it's not number one, but um, it is growing very quickly. Right. It, the deal fees in uh, technology investment banking grew 30% year over year um, from 2019 to 2020 when the overall investment banking fee pool only grew by 18%. So what that tells you is investment banking is growing its share of the pie, right? It's growing like its market share within the overall investment banking pool. Um, so that's obviously very promising. So that's the first thing that I would be thinking about. Um, not to mention personally, I don't know about you guys, but I think that technology is a lot more interesting than financial institutions, which is you know working on like banks and insurance companies and uh, those types of clients. Uh, as well as industrials, right? Like, uh, I don't know what you think of when you think of industrial companies. I think of like companies that make um, paper or something, right? So um, so that's the first thing, right, uh, is the fee pool. The second thing is, um, look, I think that all companies will eventually become a technology company in some way, shape, or form, right? Uh, Mark Andreessen, which is one of the most uh, famous venture capitalists out there, he has a famous saying, where uh, he, he said, you know, I don't know how many years ago at this point, that software is eating the world, right? There's almost nothing that you can do nowadays that doesn't touch technology in some way, shape, or form. In fact, most of the things that we do now, there's probably some sort of software that could help you do it, right? Like there's probably some app on your phone that will help you, you know, do whatever it is that you need to do. And so eventually, um, all, his point of view is that, like all companies will have to become technology companies, right? Even even the banks, like even investment banks, we're seeing that now. A lot of the investment banks are investing a lot into technology, right? And automation and things like that. And so um, I just think it's where the future is going. Um, this also goes hand in hand with the first point. 
about the fee pool imp- increasing much faster than the overall fee pool, um, I think that will continue to be the case, right? Because as more companies become technology companies, they're going to fall under your purview when you're working in technology investment banking. And also, the technology industry in general is just a very active industry when it comes to like capital raising, um, you know, like whether raising VC money or raising, um, you know, growth rounds or, you know, eventually going public. There's a lot of tech IPOs. Even on the M&A side, um, there's just a lot of activity because, uh, you know, there's always new products being launched in the technology space. There's a lot of innovation going on and a lot of the bigger players to keep up. Um, they'll usually snap up the smaller guys uh, just to acquire their t- technology or to, to stay uh, competitive, right? And so that's the type of environment that's very conducive to having a successful investment banking career, okay? Um, the, so that's the second point. Technology is, is, or software is eating the world. Technology is eating the world. The third um, reason why I think technology investment banking is one of the best comes down to the exit opportunities, okay? A lot of you are doing technology or are doing investment banking for the exit opportunities. You're not planning on staying in investment banking forever and ever, right? Now, um, when you look at exit opportunities, like a lot of people want to go to the buy side, right? Like whether it's something like uh, venture capital, um, which by the way, you can only get go into venture capital uh, if you start on the tech side, right? Or maybe, maybe healthcare as well, but tech and healthcare, pretty much the only ones that are relevant for venture capital, um, but not just on the venture capital side, but also um, even on the private equity side, um, there's a, more and more tech PE firms and growth equity firms uh, and VC firms that, that have been opening up, right? So there's just a lot more opportunity for or places you can exit to. Um, and even if you want to go into public investing, you want to go to hedge funds, but you look at the top 10 uh, publicly traded companies today by market capitalization, I think like seven out of 10 or eight out of 10 of them are in technology, right? And there's a reason for that. Like all the biggest and most valuable companies in the world now are tech companies and the companies that are moving the markets um, on good days and on bad days are technology companies. So even if you want to go to the hedge fund round, you want to do public investing, I think like having expertise in technology is just going to become more and more important over time, right? Um, not to mention like even if you don't want to exit to the buy side, like maybe you want to go the corporate route. If you want to go the corporate route, you got to think about like, well, which industry do I want to go corporate in? I don't think there's a better and more lucrative and more interesting industry out there than technology uh, for you to work in. And I, I can speak from experience because I've worked in technology, right? After banking, after PE, I worked for Square. I worked for GitHub, right? These are companies that, you know, were started out as startups. Um, you know, Square was $3 billion when I joined. Uh, when I left, I think they were like 3 or 4 or $5 billion. And today they're, I don't know, 80 90 $100 billion, right, in value, right? And GitHub, um, you know, when I joined was $750 million. And then, you know, a couple of years later, they got acquired by Microsoft for seven and a half billion dollars. Like typically you're not going to see that type of 10 X return um, in the company. And as a result of that, in your stock options and your ownership in the company and the equity that you get, you're not going to see that type of trajectory or that type of explosive growth outside of technology. Right. And so like, even personally for me, um, I, I got a very, very good financial outcome from Square and from GitHub because of the equity that I got in the business, right? And you're just not gonna get that anywhere else. So that's the third thing. And the last thing I will say on this is I think you get to cover more interesting companies in technology, right? Again, think about all the coolest tech, uh, coolest companies you could think of right now, right? Whether you wanna say it's Tesla or I don't know, uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Spotify, Netflix, you know, whatever, whatever it is that you're into, artificial intelligence, virtual reality, cryptocurrency, like there's all, in my opinion, all the most interesting things that are out there that are happening um, are in technology, right? All the innovation is happening in technology. So you're never going to feel like you're bored. You're never going to feel like, oh my God, this company I'm covering is so boring. Like I have no interest in it whatsoever. In fact, a lot of the companies you're going to be covering have products that you probably actually personally use on a day-to-day basis, right? Apple, like you use their phone, Google, like whatever it may be, Facebook, Instagram. So again, I think it's just the most interesting industry to cover. And also um, the work that you're doing is really impactful because the clients that you're advising are literally changing our lives, right? The products they're putting out are literally changing our lives and improving our quality of life. And so I think that could be a very, very fulfilling thing, right? Now, just to make this kind of balance, I think like there is one downside if you want to work in technology investment banking. Um, and I don't want to say this is definitely a downside, but it could be a downside. For people who would prefer to work in New York and not on the West Coast, um, the uh, the set uh, the headquarters for most technology investment banking groups is located on the West Coast 
in Silicon Valley in the Bay Area, right? But personally, I've lived there for over 10 years. I can tell you it's a great place to live. I love it. Um, there's a lot of things to do. It's great for young people. And so I don't personally think that that's a drawback. Um, and also, you can al always start uh, in the Bay Area for a few years and then move over to New York or elsewhere um, after you exit banking if you choose to do so, right? So anyway, hopefully this helps you guys give you some things to think about when you're choosing groups and uh, that'll be it for today, all right? Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're looking for more customized advice that's tailored for your specific situation, then I invite you to book a free strategy session with our team at the link below. We'll talk to you soon.